magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping make the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello witches, wizards and those who have just escaped from Azkaban, welcome back to my Harry Potter Kitchen, the YouTube series where we're baking our way through the Wizarding World books, making recipes for every item of food and drink that we find inside. Last week we made a magical shrinking potion for Snape's homework, if you missed that check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you don't want to miss any of these magical recipes then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell and you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. We've got so many treats on the way so let's get back into it. <laughs> The next recipe from The Prisoner of Azkaban can also be found in Chapter 1, Outpost. Ron has sent Harry a letter and is telling him all about his summer holiday and the family trip to Egypt. He then mentions he didn't realise Fred and George had put beetles in his soup. We're going to have to find a way to make beetles tasty. The weird and wonderful ingredients just keep on coming. Now I'm not going to put real beetles into my soup but I'm going to show you a very very quick trick so you can have pretty much any shaped animal you like that will work perfectly in soup. For this we're going to use squid ink which doesn't actually have a massively strong flavour, it just tastes a little bit salty but it is super 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 black. So you only need to use a little bit and it will completely dye any of your ingredients. And because it does have that kind of briny taste it's going to work beautifully in a fish soup. So I'm going to show you how to make a lightly spiced cod soup tons of vegetables in there so it's also a good health kick and then we'll add in our beetles at the end as well. It's gonna be a little bit spooky so it's a good recipe to have for Halloween but trust me it tastes incredible and only takes a few minutes to prepare. This is your first step. To make our homemade fish soup we're gonna begin by preparing our ingredients. First we want to season our cod so I'm gonna slice that into strips and then turn them around and slice them again so we're left with about one inch cubes. Place these into a bowl and then season well with salt, pepper, coriander and soy sauce. Stir through and once it's nice and evenly coated, set to one side to marinate. We also want to start preparing our pasta, so I'm going to place some flour onto my worktop and then make a little well in the middle. Crack your egg into the centre and then I'm going to season this with salt and squid ink. This is going to give us a lovely dark colour and also a little bit of a briny taste to complement the fish. You want to start whisking this from the centre working your way out until the mixture comes together. Once you've got yourself a nice dough ball you then want to knead that for about 10 minutes until you have a nice smooth pasta dough. It might feel like it's resisting you quite a bit at the start but carry on working through until it's lovely and smooth. Wrap this in cling film and then allow it to rest at room temperature for at least half an hour. Now after you've kneaded your pasta, leaving it to rest is a really really important step and that's because as you're kneading you're working up all of those protein strands and that gluten so it's going to be quite tense and you need to let it rest and relax so they loosen up a bit, it's going to be so much easier for you to shape and you'll get a much better texture once you've cooked them. And as you can see this pasta will work for any recipe you like, you don't have to turn them into beetles if you don't want to. So whether you're serving some ravioli, some tortellini, or maybe even a squid ink lasagna, you can have a little play around and use this however you like. Ours is going into our soup though, so let's get to it. Next you want to prepare your vegetables, so I'm going to finely dice my mirepoix which is made from onions, carrots and celery. I'm using shallots in this recipe instead, so I'm going to cut those in half, remove the skin and then slice them finely. Do the same for the carrots, peeling them first before you slice them, and the celery. I'm then going to place a large saucepan onto a medium heat and then add in my butter. Once that's melted I'm going to add in my shallots, carrots and celery and then stir that through cooking it off for about 3 minutes. 
To season the base of this soup, I'm using garlic, ginger, and chili. Peel the garlic and then press that through a garlic crusher. Peel and then finely grate your ginger and then slice your chili in half to de-seed it before finally slicing that too. Add these into the pan and then mix well. After another one to two minutes, you then want to season the base with salt, pepper, rosemary, thyme, and bay leaves. Stir this through so the base is nice and evenly coated. To make this soup lovely and hearty, we're also gonna add in some potatoes. So I'm gonna peel and wash those before cutting them into half inch cubes. It's easiest to slice these one way, lie them down, and then cut them into strips before cutting into cubes. You can then add these into the pot as well, stirring until the potatoes are lovely and coated. To bring this soup to life, we're gonna prepare a very strong stock. So I'm actually using twice as much as I usually would. If you have fresh stock, then that is perfect. Or of course you can use stock cubes if you don't have any at home. Pour this into the vegetables along with your fish sauce. I'm then gonna bring this broth up to the boil, turn down the heat to a simmer and then place a lid on top, leaving a slight gap so it doesn't bubble over and simmer it for 15 minutes. Now simmering your soup broth is a really important step to make sure you get all of that depth of flavour in every single mouthful. So we're going to do that over some time and make sure those vegetables and those spices have enough of a chance to come together. And what I love about making soup broth is you can do this in a massive, massive quantity and then just freeze it so it's ready whenever you want some homemade fresh soup. So if you've got some veg in the bottom of the fridge that's starting to go a little bit weird, take it out, turn it into a beautiful soup and then trust me it's going to be better than anything you can get in the shops you don't have to throw away any of your vegetables <laughs> okay while ours is simmering away we've got a few more ingredients to prepare and then we'll cook them to perfection before serving up to create our squid ink pasta beetles i'm going to unwrap that from the cling film and then cut it into six balls shape these in your hand and then you can use kitchen scissors or a sharp knife to cut out the detail i like to roll it into an oblong Slice at the bottom to pull out the legs. Beetles have six, so it's three on each side. And then make the markings on the back and around the head. It does take a little bit of practice, so just keep working at it and try to keep the pasta covered up so it doesn't dry out. Our final ingredient to prepare is our spring onion. So I've given that a good wash too, and I'm gonna thinly slice it at a slight angle. Remove the bay leaf from the soup as well as the rosemary and thyme if they're still on the stalks and then add in the spring onion and the cod, stirring that through until it's nice and evenly combined. You can then place the beetles on top and you want them to be about three quarters of the way submerged. The lid then needs to go back on top and you're going to cook that for about 15 minutes. Flip the beetles over as they're quite large, they need a little bit more time to cook and then give that another 10 minutes until the cod is lovely and flaky and the pasta is cooked through. To serve, you want to place generous helpings into your bowl and then sneak your beetles on top, just like Fred and George. It might look a little out of the ordinary, but trust me, it tastes magical. So this is a little spooky twist on a very incredible tasting soup. Trust me, it's definitely worth giving a go. You get so much flavor from all of those ingredients that come together beautifully. And you've got a little novelty beetle there, which, you know, who doesn't love a little bit of fun while they're eating their dinner? <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments what you think of this recipe and if you're gonna give it a go. We have got lots more on the way, so if you don't want to miss any of those, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on the notification bell, and you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'm off to tuck into my soup and my beetles, so I'll see you next week.